Yeah, I think people underestimate it. You see people, oh, they've come over homesick. Mm -hmm. the, even the Aussies that come over here go back over there and say, oh, homesick. But it's, it is a big step. Um, I probably had it quite hard because I was on my own when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for anyone going over to the side of the world is, is, is really tough. Um, and there's times where you just want to give your mum a hug or mm. you want to talk to your parents about you know the game or training or what's going on with your day and there's only so long you can FaceTime for really mm. um, but it, it it makes you sit back and reflect on sort of how important your family and your mm. friends are um, and how important it is just to to see them every day like now I've been home a year now nearly and like to see all my friends and family all the time it's something that I don't take for granted anymore yeah so I just I just decided to 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 do it and as soon as I signed it I was I probably regret it straight away <laughs> and, and thinking about it because I had a few months to think about going over there on my own and yeah it, it was like I say rugby league wise it was a big step up but mm. also as growing as a sort of person I was quite I was quite shy at Wigan uh, I probably didn't enjoy it that much um, because I'd stepped up and I was probably me and Yamile Hanley were probably the only two my age that mm. kind of stepped up and like I say I was pretty shy I wasn't kind of out there so I didn't like go in and speak to loads of people at training I sort of went in and put my head down and you know got on with it and it probably made me not enjoy it whereas as soon as I went over there I, I kind of was pushed into that sort of yeah you have to get to know people you have to talk to people and uh, yeah I think that's helped me grow as a person quite a lot I went straight into quarantine for two weeks that probably made it worse go over the jet lag but you have two weeks of not speaking to anyone uh, but yeah when, when I got there I was just like I say, I was just pushed out of my comfort zone and you kind of have to have mm. to speak to people. Um, and it's a pretty daunting feeling. Uh, I'd signed a three year contract over there. So, and at the time COVID was still pretty big. So I was thinking I'm not going to see my family for three years. Um, but I think when you get put in a situation where you can't, you've got no other choice, you kind of have to, mm. you kind of have to make friends and you yeah, kind of have to get used to it quick. Um, so yeah, that was a big thing, learning how to do that. I, I got to know my, my housemates pretty well um, mm. and I think it just came naturally really. I was still shy when I got over there but after six six months I, I was good mates with everyone at the club mm. and I think it helped that I went to a good club over there with good people. I think mm. they've, they're a pretty tight-knitted bunch, there's not many coming in and out every year at Canberra. Um, so yeah, I was fortunate in the fact that I had a good support system there around me and Ricky the coach and all the well-being sort of people over there were really good with me as well so yeah I'm pretty grateful for that. As a person you realise you got you got to step up mm. uh, you can't you can't be someone in the background and get your NRL debut which I found out pretty quickly I was told me I was over there 18 months before I got a shot on my debut um, so yeah you've got to, in training in the round training you've got to be talking you've got to be it's pretty uncomfortable what you've Got to try and be a leader around older, more experienced mm. people. Um, but but learning to do that's I think stood me in good stead. Mm. With being as soon as I got shot into the first team here, I was I, I knew how to be vocal and I knew how to sort of speak to people on and off the pitch here. So it's, it it does help a lot and it makes you feel more comfortable. You you've, you you need some help from some mm. people. Um, Andrew Bishop was the um, well-being officer over there and he was really good uh, mm. obviously the Canberra's sort of away from anywhere else and there's mm. not many rugby league people grow up and play for the Raiders from Canberra so I think the the club's kind of used to players coming from far far away and having to, to settle into the place mm. so they've got kind of a good setup there to to uh, help people feel comfortable I remember I was playing against Sydney Bears um, in reserve grade. Ke Kev was playing for Sydney actually. Mm. He had a quite a good team. Like Matt Lodge was playing a few of the first teamers, and uh, I thought I was playing pretty well. And I think I just got a bit overexcited, tried to hit someone off kickoff, and bam, broke my jaw um, in two places. Yeah, so the first few days were pretty bad. It took me three days to get operated on with that. Um, so I was just sat in hospital thinking about it really. Um, and a lot of my mates taking the neck out of me because I look like I look like a bit of an idiot. Um, but yeah, it was the, 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 the it was one of them where I just because I had so long on my own in the in the hospital, I was kind of just thinking about home and stuff, and mm. that kind of swayed my decision. It's, not, it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not actually too bad of an injury because you can you can get back running and lifting weights pretty quick. Um, but obviously, to me, it felt like the end of the world at the time. So I think if that hadn't happened, I I probably wouldn't have come back home and. 
I might have made a couple of more first team appearances that year, but I, at that time I knew that I was at, like out for the end of the regular season, and it was one of them where I was I was just missing home, and I don't know what it was. It was like a switch in my head that just said, "No, I just I just want to get back now." Yeah. Um, and I think my dad was pretty annoyed with me about it because he, he knew that I could have stayed in, in a different world. I probably could, but I, was, I made my decision, and it's not one that I regret. I'm, like I say, I'm loving it here, um, and I think I made the right decision of coming to this club. Um, but yeah, it was that that, that that was the main fa driving factor in me coming home. Yeah, it's probably been a tough year results-wise and probably performance-wise as a team. But I'm I'm young and getting them minutes and being yeah. around the first team's good for me. Uh, I'd need to make the transition now and to starting to talk a bit more and try and be a leader. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I, I love it. It's a good group of lads. Um, like we have a good laugh around training and stuff. Um, and yeah, it's, I think everything goes through sort of this this sort of period and mm. it will come out the other side as a group together. And I think it'll make us stronger as a group. And yeah, like I say, I, I, I love it here.